Labour for Trans Rights yeah. people, Alexis and Alex, thank you for joining me today. Happy to be here yeah, on this momentous for... occasion. <laughs> yeah. oh. It's been quite a few days. <laughs> yes. Safe to say, safe to say that it's not. It has not been a happy, rosy time of sunshine in the Labour Party as yeah. a trans person. It's not been the easiest few days to be Labour for trans rights. <laughs> yeah, indeed, it is. It has rather been the opposite. It has been a lot of angry screaming, wanting to bite my nails off, swearing at the TV. You know the the usual sort of things that happens when the transphobe opens their mouth and the transphobe in question is leader of the Labour Party. Uh, so I was going to ask, um, what's your take on Kiss Diamond's position they've been putting out? Spineless cowards. Let's just go with that. <laughs> there, there can be no other way to describe it. Starmer spent 2021 fawning over us, telling us that they would absolutely stand by us, that they would have our backs, that GRA was coming, that transphobia definitions for the party were coming, and they've betrayed that trust uh, quite thoroughly. They've embraced everything that we hate about the Labour Party right now. They've embraced the turf talking points. They've just stopped even bothering for even the most marginal of token gestures towards us. It's clear that Keir Starmer's Labour is not safe for trans people and we are hanging by a thread in our commitment to keep it going because, frankly, we expect better from Labour. We expect better from the Party of Equality and it's just not anymore. And it goes without saying as well that, you know, Welsh Labour and Scottish Labour have been fairly good oh, in their response excellent. to all this. And Keir Starmer isn't just uh, screwing over trans people. He's screwing over whole swathes of his party. And people are going to get really angry about that. Just giving in to a handful of bigoted, prejudiced MPs, that is not going to end well. It's amazing that we had so many wonderful speeches from Scottish MSPs and even from Labour MPs here today and yet the party still doesn't recognise that it's digging itself into a pit it can't escape from Starmer should know that this, this juncture of embracing turf talking points isn't going to have a happy ending for him there's no reason why he would want to embrace this other than to gain the marginal few votes of turfs and bigots and appease those in the party who hold so much influence over him instead of standing up and standing with us, standing with the LGBT members who are now shocked and betrayed, and the devolved g groups of Labour who have also been stabbed in the back. It's inconceivable, but here we are. Here we are at the start of the year, not even the first month of the year, and already Labour feels like it's stepped back 20 years. It's ridiculous. So, um, have you tried to uh, reach out to Keir Starmer? Oh, funny you mentioned that. We launched an open letter to Keir Starmer after his Mumsnet interview uh, back in October. Was it October? Yes. Time is a fickle thing. We, we reached out and we received the support of quite literally hundreds of people from across the UK and even across the world. We received support from Unison LGBT, the LGBT branch of Britain's largest trade union. Young we, Labour and Labour students. Labour students students and young labour. It is impossible to get them to agree on anything, but we managed it. <laughs> We managed to get all this support, but did we hear a word? Did we squat? Never a response, never a suggestion, never a single word. We asked Keir Starmer to come around the table with us and discuss trans rights. Keir Starmer never even responded to us. Not a word, never responded. So what are we left with now? We're left with a Labour Party where Keir Starmer happily embraces turf talking points about... 16 year olds not being able to change their gender, about we need to take it slow and steady, about this being rushed legislation, about wait and see. But the fact is, we've already waited and see. We've spent six fucking years of trying to get this through. Keith Dahmer has allowed himself to be outflanked by a Tory minister, and that's quite an embarrassing position for a progressive party to be in. Yeah, so. I mean, I'm going to ask you. If you I'm going to ask you if you have a crystal ball, basically. But um, 
in the circumstance that Keir Starmer and Keir Starmer's Labour Party wins the next general election, do you think there is a possibility that there is something to hope for there, for some kind of turnaround once he's claimed his throne? Or do you think that this is a, a sign that this is going to be the way of things for now? It completely depends on how good we are at our jobs. Yes, it rather, <laughs> rather does. Um, it completely depends on Labour MPs, especially Labour MPs who have professed their support for the trans community over the years, coming out and challenging Keir Starmer. And uh, in the event the Labour wins general election, challenging a Keir Starmer government to honour its its commitment to bring in self-ID laws across the UK. Uh, hopeful. Uh, I'm certainly not optimistic. <laughs> I think when it comes to the next general election, there's a lot of uncertainty up in the air. Keir Starmer, as it stands right now, wouldn't do nothing for us. And that's the bitter truth. And that's the truth that people will have to accept when talking to trans people about why they don't support the party. But it's our job now to keep up the fight. It's incredibly depressing to be trans in Labour right now, but we're not giving up. We're not going to stop fighting. We're not going to stop working with the excellent MPs like Olivia Blake and Nadia Witton, who are here today. We're not going to stop pushing for solidarity and support from our trade union allies. We're not going to stop going to members across the country and getting them in their CLPs to stand up in support with us. Because if enough of us do that, we can show the party where the real power lies. And Keir Starmer will ever regret having opened his mouth to talk about turf talking points. Keir Starmer's got to realise at some point that, I mean, if we look at this crowd here, it's predominantly young people. This is the Labour electorate of the future. Does he want to alienate and ostracise millions of voters across the UK on trans rights? It's not a calculation I'd be making. Keir Starmer has to recognise that trans rights will win in the end. We'll win because we'll be doing it for love rather than hate and because we have a clear moral goal. If there's nothing else, he knows that by doing this now, he only gets short-term gain. So we're going to keep fighting, we're going to keep pushing, and we're going to crawl through the mud, we're going to take on every single challenge that comes our way. We're going to make sure that we're there, nipping at their heels, reminding them that they made a promise to us years ago that they'd always stand with us, and we're going to remind them of the fact they haven't kept that promise. Oh, uh, Labour for Trans Rights, thank you for talking to me. Thank you. Thank you.